Imran Khan was first selected for Pakistan in 1971, aged 18. It would be another five years before he would establish himself at the highest level. He was probably picked before his time. I think he was picked purely on a great talent, but a very undisciplined talent, um, um, who, when he was first selected, was really feeling his way in first class cricket, let alone being thrown into test cricket. And some of his early performances, he came across as an undisciplined cricketer. And he really didn't um, solidify his place on the side until 1975, 1976. But in that meantime, from his test debut in 71 through there, he had studied at Oxford University. And I think learnt much about life, much about himself, and much about cricket in that period. In 1976-77, Imran finally made an impact on test cricket when he took four wickets in an innings and made a half century against New Zealand. In Australia, later that season, he took five wickets in the second innings of the second test. A week later, he took 12 wickets in Sydney. Probably his first great performance was in Sydney in 76-7 when he took 12 wickets. And that was the series that he sort of became an established uh, test cricketer. And his, his game, evolved from there. Imran Khan was a fantastic cricketer, so he, he could lead from the front. He would never ask people to go out there to do things he couldn't do or to tell people things that were impossible because he knew he could do it if that means others could do it. Bat, ball, in the field, fantastic athlete. That series that he had against the West Indies was a tough series because West Indies had an outstanding team. But because he believed, he made Pakistan believe. Yeah. After taking 25 wickets against the West Indies in the Caribbean, Imran joined World Series cricket. In the company of the world's finest fast men, he honed his bowling skills even further. For a, a budding fast bowler to be in an environment that also featured opponents such as Lilly um, and the, West, the great West Indies fast bowlers, Roberts, Holding, Garner, and he also had the good fortune playing for the World Eleven in World Series cricket that he was playing with fast bowlers such as um, Mike Proctor. Well, I don't know whether I gave advice to Imran Khan or he gave me advice. It was really a matter of uh, discussing the game of cricket. World Series cricket was a huge challenge. We were, we were quite matey. We just discussed the pros and cons of being all around us. I think uh, I must say whatever Pakistan cricket has done after uh, Imran's retirement or Javed Miyanda's retirement, those two main guys showed us that uh, how to tackle the world, how to tackle the world cricket and how to beat the world cricket and after that we won a lot of series against a lot of sides, even their home turfs. And I think that's, uh, that, that's uh, the positive mark Imran left in me, in Makar Yunus and in people like Umar Gul, people like Shoaib Akhtar, you know, all these bowlers and that's what we picked up from him and I think uh, we'll, we should thank, uh, thank Imran Khan to give us the, the, the good foundation how to be a great fast bowler. I would say that Imran was the one that, that uh, I rated very highly, a uh, penetrative uh, new ball bowler. Uh, as a batsman, uh, he could bat any sort of innings where he could bat high in the order and play a very subdued sort of innings or if necessary, uh, take the attack to the bowler and change the course of the match. And of course, he fielded sort of okay, but, and he was a captain. And uh, he was more consistent, I believe, than, uh, than the rest of us. From 1979 to 1982, Imran was clearly Pakistan's chief strike bowler. Against Sri Lanka in 1982, he took 8 for 58 and 6 for 58. Still the best match statistics in test history for a Pakistani bowler. In England in 1982, Imran Khan was a revelation. He had been a compromised choice as Pakistani captain, but he immediately showed his leadership qualities. The Lion of Pakistan was born. What he was able to bring was to a, a very kind of flamboyant Pakistani team, uh, probably real discipline and, and, and edge to them, um, but allowing them to express their natural talent. Um, probably in, you know, Pakistan have not had a captain like Imran you know, since, since he's uh, finished, to be able to bring um, a, 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 not a team of individuals, but all very different characters. Um, and occasionally you could say that Pakistan were ill-disciplined, but he was able to, to bring the, all their talents to the table 
and to get them to produce. Pakistan, I think, have produced a lot of great cricketers, but they have never really produced too many great teams because of leadership. And I think Imran Khan, the leadership that he brought to that Pakistan team, made him, in my opinion, the greatest captain Pakistan perhaps ever had, but certainly the best one I ever saw. After losing the England series narrowly, Pakistan went on to beat Australia and England at home. In these two series, totaling nine test matches, Imran took an amazing 53 wickets. During the 1982-83 series against India, Imran took 40 wickets in the series, despite struggling with what was thought to be deep-seated bruising to a shin. It was later confirmed that he had a severe stress fracture. He would not bowl another ball in test cricket for three years. He didn't play at his peak when he was 30, 31 years old. When bowlers uh, reaches, uh, they touches their peak of fast bowling. If, when, you, when, you, when you get to know as a bowler about reverse swing, when you know as a bowler how to bowl the new ball, Imran didn't play for two years because of his chain injuries. So I think uh, he got 366 wickets. He would have been easily gone past 450, I reckon, if he would have played those two years. But definitely one of the fastest bowlers in that particular era, for, that's for sure, and dangerous.